ChatGPT has finally released ChatGPT Search, a brand new search engine that takes place right inside of ChatGPT. It pulls in relevant links, up-to-date information, and ChatGPT has had web access before. This is not the first time they're introducing web access, but this new ChatGPT Search, which I'll show you in this video, I have it on my account right now, is a brand new way to search using ChatGPT. Now they're positioning this to be a direct competitor to Google Search, an alternative to Google Search. You can get fast, timely answers with links to relevant web searches, and previously you had to go to a search engine like Google in order to do that. So this blends the benefits of this natural language chat interface with up-to-date information like news, stock quotes, sports, and so on. And you'll see this new icon in your ChatGPT account, and you could turn this on to go into search mode, which I'll show you in a second. As I'm recording this, ChatGPT search is only available to ChatGPT Plus and Teams users coming out today. And if you were on the wait list on search.chatgpt.com, if you were on that wait list before, you also got access to it today, but it's not going to be available to free users just yet, but it says it will be coming to free users in the coming months too. Now, here's a few different examples on the official release. So looking at weather, obviously, up-to-date information in the stock market, in sports, in news, and here is map for getting to places near you. Now, let me go to the ChatGPT website so I could show you this. So if you have this available right now in your account, you'll see it right over here. It says search the web. And if you click on it, it turns blue. And now you're in search mode. So even if you don't have this on sometimes, if it needs to do a web search, I notice it does do a web search. But this basically puts you in search mode. And you're going to get some suggestions here. So let's look up just a sports search right here, just clicking that, and I'll show you some other examples here. But the way it does it is, it's going to give you an answer in the same format that ChatGPT always replies to you. Instead of giving you links, it gives you an answer, it's pulled some pictures, but you'll see these references right here underneath each section of the answer, and it pulls it from different sources. So it's really nice. Right now, it's pulled from multiple sources, which if I click sources, I could see all of them over here. And if I click on one, it opens a new tab on my browser here, and I could go read more about that. But it does give me a nice summary of what it pulled from that website directly here in search. Okay, since I'm recording this on Halloween, I'm going to say, what is the trick-or-treating hours here in Chicago? I have this on. Let's see what we get here. Searching the web. Okay, it's pulling some links in Chicago, no official hours but it's usually from five to eight. However, in some neighborhoods, this may vary. And then again, here's all the different sources it pulled that information from, and it puts that little link right over here. Okay, let's see how up-to-date this information is. They just released search within the last hour. So I'm gonna ask, what's the latest update with ChatGPT? OpenAI has recently introduced several new updates. Real-time web search integration, ChatGPT now includes real-time web search capabilities. And this is directly from The Verge from today. So really nice recap of it from The Verge. And if we click that link, okay, perfect. It took us right to The Verge website on a new tab. Now, let me see if I could do a follow-up. Tell me more about the search option in ChatGPT. Okay, again, up-to-date information, but it dove a little bit deeper into ChatGPT search. Available today, that's again from The Verge. It's pulled in things from Financial Time. Let me see if I could recap it in one sentence. Okay, perfect. So this is exactly what I need for a little snippet. And then I could maybe turn this into a blog post with a follow-up prompt. Now, let me show you a couple of different examples here. This one, if I'm comparing a product review between iPhone 16 and 16 Pro. Let's see what kind of search we get there. Okay, this is pretty comprehensive here. So it broke up performance, design, camera, battery life, pricing. Let me ask for it in table format. Okay, this is really great. A lot of times with ChatGPT, because some of the information without the web access was outdated, it couldn't do things like this, where iPhone 16 is pretty new and the information that he has in his training is a little bit old. And if it didn't do web searches, it wouldn't give me results that I could use like this. And again, I could go through these sources to even pull in more details if I want to. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's check for stock price. Oh, this is really nice. It gave us a nice chart here and I could even go to six months year to date. Yeah, very useful way to pull up stock. So it works just like Google search. Let's try this one. Find me the best coffee shop in Chicago. Let's see if it pulls in a map for us this time. Oh, perfect. Look at this. I got a whole map over here. We could 
switch to list view. Oh, I could look around the map. Let me see if I could kind of zoom in. Okay, it's doing a quick update here. Website call direction. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, let me try this one. Find someone to fix my garage door. And I'm not going to give it my location. Let me see if it knows where I'm at. Okay, so it worked. It gave me some things in Chicago, but I'm actually in the suburbs here. So it doesn't know my exact location. So I guess I need to give it my zip code here to pull in something from my exact location. But it did know that I'm in Chicago. I'm assuming it knows that from my custom instructions, but it doesn't have location services like Google search has. Now let's see if we get a deal here. So a lot of times we're searching for deals. This time I'll do a travel to LA Southwest deal. Let's see if we could pull that in. Southwest offers a flight from Chicago to LA. The fare starts at 110 one way trip departing December nine. What about a deal for tomorrow? Okay. And I asked her for a deal for tomorrow. It says either search for low fare calendar on the Southwest website or go to Google flights. Oh, interesting. So Google has obviously a whole lot of tools that takes it well beyond the search engine. So maybe chat GPT will be working on some of these other options related to travel and things like that. It did find me a good coffee shop in the city. Now, let me just show you how far chat GPT has to go to even compete with Google in search right now. Chat GPT is getting 3.1 billion visits a month. Okay, that's pretty significant amount of visits. And you could see it's tracking up here. Let's test this out with Google here. And Google is getting 82 billion visits per month. Obviously, this is the number one website in all of the internet. And YouTube is the second and is also a search engine. And I think that's about 26 billion views a month. But 82 million views compared to 3 billion views. Obviously, Google has been around for, you know, over 20 years. ChatGPT is, you know, a little over two years old right now. So I also use perplexity a lot, which works a lot like the search GPT function. And I'll include a video to show you how that works, because perplexity is another alternative to both ChatGPT search and Google. So you might find that useful as well. And that has other functions that the search GPT doesn't have just yet. So I'll link a video about that here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.